interesting, one of the sort of um, pickouts, if you like, from Gareth Southgate's news conference before the Italy game, which, as we all know now, England went on to win that one 2-1. Uh, he was talking about the squad depth for England at the moment. And actually, well, it sounds a bit worrying. This is what he had to say. You know, we've got to pick our best players where possible. Um, and then there's a balance between do you go with a certain level of player who's not playing quite as regularly or a level of player who's physically fit and doing well but you know I'm not I'm not talking about specific names here but as a general principle you know I feel as though it's interesting talking to other coaches of national teams that they feel the same you've got to try to pick your best players as long as they can get to a reasonable physical level but we are shorter than the other big nations on depth of uh, selection I'm happy with the groups that we've got to select from and the quality we've got to select from but in certain positions we are short of depth okay Cass so uh, in a way he's painting a a bleak picture uh, on the talent pool that England (laughs) as I can see your face already um I don't think you're quite in agreement with Gareth Southgate. Well, I mean, look, I like a a lot of things that Gareth has done, but if you're going to tell me that England are short, that is laughable because England have a depth in so many positions. They would be the envy of Europe. They've had successful teams at under-17, under-18s, under-21. I mean, just think of the centre-half position. You could go, well, Lewis Dunk could play in there. You mm-hmm. could go, tomorrow, AC Milan could come in. Mm-hmm. Lewis, uh, sorry, I mentioned Lewis Dunk. Ben Mee, I know he's 33, but there's quite a few international teams that have him. Yeah. You know, you could probably go to Max Kilman, who's not been given a cap yet. You know, Wolves, who've done brilliantly well last year. They're just a few now. There's so many positions England have got overload on that I just cannot see how England, you could feel sorry. We always knew... When you played England, you were playing a group of players that were playing at the biggest clubs at the highest level regularly. Mm-hmm. You know, and you go through that England team. Marcus Rashford, who's apparently by Xavi at Barcelona, one of the best strikers in the world, probably doesn't make England's front free. Mm-hmm. So I can't go along with that England have, you know, maybe not the depth that you'd like to think they should have. England have always had that. That's why there's so many... The home nation games, when Ireland pl- played England or Wales or Scotland, there was so much enthusiasm and drive because everybody knew in all our squads, we all knew that England was spoilt for choice. Uh, there's more to that interview, obviously, with Gareth okay. Southgate. And, w- and what he went on to say is that in the Premier League, around 32% of starters are eligible for England, which has come down since when he took over with 38% was when he first took over as the England manager. He says the best way to judge our English players is on the Champions League. He says, if you look at Champions League minutes this year, we are sixth on the list. And he says we're behind Brazil, we're behind Portugal, for example. Uh, And if we are a a nation that wants to be competing at the highest level, he's clearly raising this as a big issue, that we're not getting the players through to play enough minutes, especially in the elite competitions so you can kind of understand where he's coming from and from that no, angle, I no? can't. No? No, I can't. Because the numbers have gone down because of the amount of money that's been spent on foreign players to come. And loads more players have a choice now. The days of, you know, when I played for Republic of Ireland, that was a new thing. You'd have a chance to play for Ireland because of your an- ancestry. Mm. All the your international teams all around the world chose to go down the same path. Look at Belgium. You know, like how how many African players who had African passports then went to uh, Belgium to live, got their, you know, their rights to play. And, you know, they were the rules so they could play for, for Belgium. That's that's changed the rules completely now. And many clubs have, oh, sorry, many international teams have done a similar thing. Ireland did it with, you know, people like myself who, who could play under the dual, bar, dual passport. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong. That became the... Everyone copied that that format because it was hugely successful. England, to me, still have a massive pool of players to yeah. choose from. Yes, it's coming down, but it's inevitable with the influx of uh, foreign players coming to our own domestic league. Mm. It does seem as though he has um, sort of gone back on his word as well, where he, if you remember when he took over in 2017, he, he said that he would never pick players on reputation, that form was a must for players. But as we were hearing there, he was sort of saying it's now impossible to to just pick players who are playing. Hence, mm. while we're seeing the likes of Calvin Phillips and, and Harry Maguire getting their chance in this England squad, despite not getting minutes on the pitch for their clubs. 
Well, it uh, also happened with France now. You know France? You know like Benzema? He's, he could have played for Argentina. You know, Trezeguet, sorry. Trezeguet could have played for Argentina. Yeah. You know, years gone by. You know, loads of people went down that road of claiming dual, under the dual nationality rule that they could play for France. You know, France had a huge amount. Zidane, Algerian. Born, um, you know, parents, he could have played for Algeria, end up playing for France. Loads of countries did this because it was a way of them attracting more talent. Mm. Yeah, well, that was what Gareth Southgate then had to say. And interestingly, there has been more withdrawals, hasn't there? Rhys James pulled out with injury, but uh, Gareth Southgate was saying we're not going to call anybody else up because he thinks that they have enough in the squad to get through this Ukraine game, which in a way is slightly... Strange, because you think, well, if you're saying you don't have a you have a depth problem, but you're, you're happy with the squad that you have, clearly, ultimately, there isn't a depth problem no. because surely you could call. You'd have to be worried if you've lost someone like Reese James and not calling someone else up. But he's happy with what they have. Thinks they've got enough to get past Ukraine, which will be live on Talksport later on. So think of it this way: if you could say pick England's fourth or fifth, fifth best striker, he'd probably be an international in any other country. Yeah. Possibly. So if you go, yeah. well, if you go, let's go first, it's Harry Kane, then go, you could go Ivan Tony, Callum Wilson, Ollie Watkins. Yep. Then you go to the next one. Who would you go next would fit? I mean, I haven't mentioned Harry. You mentioned Harry. So who would be fifth in that line? Tammy? <sighs> Tammy yes. Abrams? He probably Tammy. play international. It you could put Marcus Rashford down the middle. Yeah, Marcus really wanted, Rashford. Obviously. You know, a lot of countries wouldn't have that choice. If you could no, go fifth, no, you're right, you're uh, right. Best English striker that was available, they yeah. would probably be an international for Danny ninety. Ings you could throw uh, in exactly there, possibly, ninety yeah. percent of them would be a striker for any other international team. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, <laughs> ultimately, this is just my call to say Rico Henry deserves a call up. <laughs> there we go. Just, just throw that one in there.